Life is full of peaks and valleys, and it might throw in lemons along the way. But for our mixed media artist, Christine Karpiak, art is a testimony of human condition. Art is life in itself, allowing us to better understand and channel our emotions and truths. Listen in as Christine shares about art as a way to navigate through grief, the power of art to influence and make a difference, why you are never short of resources to create, curiosity as a fuel to pursue art and self-expression, the process of layering in mixed media, and why you should try to be a kid again when making art, and weaving art into life and immersing yourself in the process instead of perfection. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. I've, I've always done art my whole life. I mean, even growing up, you know, when there was nothing, you know, no materials and things like we have now, I would just create something out of you know, nature, go outside and, and make my own little thing and just use my own creativity. And there's always been that, that desire and that urge to, I have to create, I have to do something. And I I've done something, you know, my whole life and a variety of different things. And, you know, you're into one thing and then you're into another thing. And then eventually it culminates. And now I'm a mixed media art teacher. And that's actually so perfect for me. I tried, you know, a lot of different venues that I thought I would love. And it ends up, this is the one thing that completely sparks me and ignites me. So I get to combine all the loves I have and make it into one thing. <laughs> That's great. So as a kid, you've always been creative. That's how young can you remember? Oh, like, yeah, right from the beginning, right from the beginning, you know, playing in, playing in the sandbox. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, six, seven, eight years old, going camping and, and gathering the moss and stuff like that. And then, you know, stitching and um, draw, of course, drawing, drawing like crazy. And, um, you know, we didn't have paints at home or anything like that. So I never did paint until I got to university when we were taking the art classes. So we did a lot of painting. That was cool. So then with the master's, you know, um, getting right into the mixed media and I, I was bitten, I couldn't stop. And so then there was an opportunity that came to me um, through Wanderlust, actually Wanderlust 2020. And I was a student at the time. And they said, any, any students who want to apply to be a teacher can do that. And I did. And I mean, I was exhausted. It was, you know, the worst timing of all, but I applied and I got chosen. And in fact, as it turns out, there was only five people chosen and I was one of them. So I was that was amazing. really opened a huge, huge door for me. And my mentor is Kasha Avery, and she's, you know, the, the, the main teacher on Wanderlust. And I took years of, well, four, actually five years of classes with her. And she's a huge influence on me. And some other artists that would be Alina Hennessy, uh, Flora Boley. They have a big impact on me as well. Um, and so I've learned, you know, all these things from all these different people and have found a way to combine it into what I like to do um, and make it my own now. So that's pretty cool. And so I got into the teaching, which I've been a teacher all my life. So that was not a stretch for me, but the power of realizing that I can make a difference in the lives of other people through my art is huge. I, you know, that was unexpected for me. Um, but as I say, with, with teaching being what I do, it's just, it's just the perfect segue. Christine, thank you so much for sharing that story. That is inspiring at the same time. It's full of layers. I said that because you said that you've always been creative as a kid. You've been trying out all these things, you know, you're curious. And then you studied art back in the university and then you started doing mixed media and people started noticing and then an opportunity opened up wonderlust 2020 you said i love that you are creative and at the same time you are also a teacher the teaching part let me touch on that real quick as a kid with all this curiosity and then creativity growing up had it ever crossed your mind that you will be you will soon be teaching other people what you love doing the most um 
Good question. I, I don't know. I, I've always wanted to be a teacher and, and I have been a teacher for years and years. But now it's it's just a whole different thing because, you know, just the place in life where I am, I have a lot of experience and things to offer people. And yeah. not only things I've learned through my art, but it's through life and this this weaving of life and art, because, you know, when you're a creative, creative with a capital C, they, they go together. You can't not you know, have your life without the creativity and vice versa. And so how do we weave that into something meaningful? Because art can be such a huge healing piece. And and that's actually one of the things that catapulted me even further into the mixed media was because it became a healing tool for me. I lost my mom suddenly to a tragic accident in 2010 at Christmas. And then six years later, I lost my sister again suddenly. Uh, she had an aneurysm and um, she was 46 and my mom was 70. So they were pretty young. And, you know, you only hear these stories from other people's, but it happened to me. And the, the rug was completely pulled out from under me. Like I struggled. I, I still do struggle, actually. And I found my art journaling was the one thing that I could completely immerse myself in. And it was you know, a form of self-expression, a form of putting your grief or whatever onto the paper. And it didn't matter. You Mm -hmm. didn't have to frame it and put it on the wall. You could close up that art journal book and you didn't have to show anybody, but you knew that you had that process that maybe just moved you one little baby step further along the grief process. And so each time, you know, and I had a little bit of time off there, which was just amazing that I was able to do that to go through this grieving process with my sister and so you know I had time to art journal and 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 each time I did I learned something about art Mm. but I also grew and healed and so like I know firsthand how healing art can be you know that's really profound. It's something that I resonate with. Um, and I'm sorry to hear about your mom and your sister. Grieving, the grieving process is, is a very personal thing. It varies from one person to another, even the timeline and how you'll be able to heal from, from that pain. But it's what's also interesting with what you said is that it was art who helped you through it. And also the point you made that an art journal, the art journal really helped you get through that. I mean, it's a process, but that small step of just expressing yourself onto that paper without without thinking as to how it might look like, what would be the outfit and how other people might perceive it. But it's more of like you unloading your emotions and that grief onto the paper. That in itself is art and it's and also a way of healing, like what you said. It's very therapeutic, really. And that's also what I did when I lost my dad, my my father two years ago. Mm. Art has been really helpful for me and I am also glad that you are um, in the mission to share what you have experienced through art and what you have learned all these years of making art with other people and I I think it takes courage as well Um, let me touch on that real quick when you when well when the first time that you taught art with other people. How was the experience? Take me through that first class where, where you taught art. Was that at <laughs> Wonderlust or? Um... That was, well, that was live, actually. Oh. We had a group of people mm-hmm. and we all got together and we decorated up and we all brought treats and I took them to a little mixed media class that I had designed. And so, you know, that's my thing. I love the preparing and, and the inspiring and the helping as you're going along. And it was great and, and just ignited a lot of people and realized, yeah, this is awesome. This is what I want to do. And then I did, you know, a couple of things for some friends, just a little thing. And then I got on to the online teaching, which I actually love as well, because um, I'm also an actress. <laughs> so I'm, you know, used to being on or, um, I don't want to say entertaining, but yeah, you know, being in front of a camera or being in front of an audience and the teaching combined. So all my passions and all my loves I get to put together. And you're, you're right. It does take courage because art is so subjective mm-hmm. and you, you don't 
really know how it's going to go over. And so you just, you, you take your chances and I can only be real to who I am. I don't try and make things that I think other people will like. I just can only make how my hand makes it for me mm-hmm. or, you know, the, the, the direction my brain wants to go. And so you can resonate with it or not. Yeah. Um, and, and this fact of this place I am now in my life with this, like you say, this, this, this mission to heal people, not mission to heal people, but it's certainly a soul's calling, a soul's purpose to want to help particularly women. I mean, not exclude excluding men, but it seems like I'm working particularly with women, just how it has panned out to help empower them, not only through their life, but through their art and into their life. Like it's, it's like I say, it's this weaving, it's this intertwining of both. And I find myself in this position and it's really empowering. It's incredibly humbling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Cause I'm going along this journey with everybody. I'm not the huge expert because we're all going through our own things, but I do feel there's a lot of things I've gone through and a lot I've learned. And I'm at this place in time that I say that I I feel like I have something to pay forward and I think you should pay something forward and, and people will take what they want out of that, you know, mm-hmm. like maybe they learn a new technique or maybe they learn a new life skill. I just put out a, a new mini class called manifestations and we, we make this mixed media art project, but we also manifest what we want to happen in their life. And I take them through that. So may, maybe they learn the life skill of manifesting something, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody takes what they need out of the journey and it's just so beautiful. And if I can help anybody in any way that, that is, that is what I want to do. Absolutely. That's very generous and noble of you to, to really think about how your art and what you do as a teacher will impact others. I love that you pointed out that it's an interconnect. It's everything is weaved together, like experiences, art, and you're absolutely right uh, when you said that because when you when you look at life in itself, sometimes people separate it that you, it, with art, it's it's totally separate that you have to be somewhat really good uh, or have some sort of background or degree to be able to do that but in reality there is art in everything that we do and how we go through life how we process things or emotions and everything all of all of those things takes creativity even the way that we we dress up on a daily basis that requires creativity that is there is art in that in it so when you said that everything is weaved together you're absolutely right. I truly believe that when someone is sharing a story about their experience, one or two person who might have listened to that may use that as a roadmap to whatever it is that they're going to, similar to what you, that person that you just listened to went through. And I, I, I love that everything that you're doing right now at its core is all rooted to that to be able to share um, what you have learned, all of these experiences with the goal of hopefully someone who is also going through the same thing might pick up something that will enable them and empower them to do, to go through that motion um, and hopefully be successful at that as well. Um, Christine, you mentioned that you have always loved teaching. You've always desired to teach. And that's very evident in what you're doing right now with the online workshop and in particular, the class that you have taught with us with that shirt. So let's let's take take me through your first live demo. And then your mini workshop, which just happened last week, or sorry, last Saturday. Um, was that also mixed media with the, the live demo? Was that a particular medium that you did for our audience? For students, yes, they were both mixed media. Uh, you know, you want to be able to tell people as many things as you can, so you feel like you're talking yeah, yeah. the whole time because you, you know, you want to fill them with as much information That's in that right. short amount of time. And you know, so my project isn't my entire favorite thing I've ever made in the entire world, um, but I hope people t- take away the process. Mm. We do talk about that in the class as well, and and like. We talked a lot about the layering and why that's um, important and how that creates interest. And it's okay if you're covering up layers that you're precious about. And right. it's really a process. And so like, it's like, it's like life, right? Life, life is a process and, yeah. and, and 
sometimes you have to dig your way out and you create this piece and you're not quite loving it or you wish you hadn't done that. Well, now it's a problem you have to solve. So how do you work your way through it? And, you know, it's like life. How do you work your way through that? And, and to just be kind with yourself and patient and take your time. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not about the final project, although we all want our final projects to be beautiful. Yes. But it, it is about the process because think about what happens in that process. You're relaxing, you know, that's so good for your heart and your, your, you're just your body, right? Your mm. mental, your mental health. And you've taken that time for yourself and you're feeling the, the materials in your hands and you're enjoying the colors and you're loving the textures and, and, oh, you're making happy accidents and discoveries. Mm. And so there's so many things that happen in that time that, um, that that's more precious than the final project or the final, you know, piece, um, but it is hard having said that it is hard when you don't love your final piece. Yes. But I think, you know, we have to throw that inner critic away because oh, when, especially when you're starting out, that mm. is the hardest thing to do. You know, everyone says, well, do this your own way. Like, yes, you can emulate. I say this too to my students. Yes, of course you can emulate what I do when you're learning because that's the biggest compliment ever, but it's also such a good way to learn. But when you're ready to, break free on your own style and you talked about the courage yeah it's hard because you want someone to hold your hand when you're just learning and, and you don't maybe know what you can do and maybe you try it and you know it's like you're ready for the recycle pile or something but but it's okay you've made that that step and and you've tried it and you learn right with every mistake you're learning those are really golden nuggets right there. I was about to ask you at the latter part of the interview, but you just mentioned all of the things that I hope will, our listeners can really um, take it to heart because one is that it's all about taking that first step and not really paying attention to the output, but more of enjoying, but more of focusing on how to enjoy the process. And... With mixed media, I, I have to ask, um, Christine, because normally when you say mixed media, I personally, let's say for watercolor, right? The most, I would say, difficult part of it is how to get started with a blank piece of paper. Is it similar with, with mixed media? Because with mixed media, you mentioned about, you know, feeling the, the, the touch of the materials in your hands and enjoying the process of layering. And you said an analogy that's similar to life and how you navigate through the peaks and valleys of it. So let's focus a little bit more on, how, on that, the process of like for mixed media. So the very blank, the blank piece of paper that you have on your hand with all the materials that you have in handy around you, how do you get started? Which one to pick? Do you have any sort of like, like process or like an outline of, okay, I'm going to start with this rough textured paper and then I'm going to put in some colors here or is there, or is it, it varies depending on your mood on that day or do you have a specific or special process for the layering for mixed media? Yeah, good question. Um, yes and no. Cause like you say, a blank canvas can be pretty daunting <laughs> especially if you have like a proper substrate not just you know an art journal book where you you want to do a good job and you're you're afraid to muck it up already from the first <laughs> step. um but the, the thing i love about mixed media is there's a lot of ways you can start so i'll give some tips and tricks to that um what we did um in the 90 minute class was we started gluing collage paper on as our basis. So that's a really fun way. And we made it, we actually made our paper. So that's a great warm up. Oh, wow. And we did journaling. So really good warm up. You're getting into a flow. And then we ripped it. It was so fun ripping that paper. Yes. And then love started. ripping paper. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like four years old again. And we, we started collaging the paper on there. So you've already got some color. You've already got some texture on there, maybe some, some shape and maybe some balance going on too. But another thing you can do is um, just to really loosen up is you can take some water soluble products. So it could be, you know, water soluble, soluble graphite pencil. It could be water soluble pastels or something. And just 
make some marks and like go big or go scribbly mm -hmm. and then add some water. So it sort of feathers it into watercolory effect and it blends and bleeds. And then you let oh. that dry. And then it's such a beautiful canvas. I, I think that's probably my favorite way to start actually. Oh, okay. okay. I guess you go through phases to answer yeah. your question. Sometimes it's, it is how you feel, like you said. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes it depends maybe on the project or the desired outcome you want, but I love that one with the pastels and you're just scribbling with, you know, whatever colors you want, maybe a few, you know, two, three colors or something. Um, and just with the water blending it out is gorgeous. You could start with acrylic inks the same way, just put some blobs on adding mm -hmm. some water. So it, you know, behaves like watercolor. You can certainly use watercolor paints to create your background and then add to that. You can journal, you can write and write and write on your paper. I was, I was actually explaining that in my class. And then you've, you've poured out your feelings and emotions already. So you're at this place now. Okay. Now I can start. And then you can start covering that up. And so uh, those are my tips anyway, that I can think off the top of my head on how to tackle a blank canvas. Yeah. Let's have you talk about that process. It's just, it, you said it feels like you're a four-year-old and at the same time, you know, having that liberty to layer things and then scribble without really focusing so much. And it has to be this very specific shape or this dimension or this particular space or position on the canvas, but more of like having the freedom to really express yourself. I think that sometimes when we talk about art, and this is very common, even for seasoned artists at an interview, that sometimes you, the, you know, the, the sense of uh, perfection um, kicks in. And, and so you wanted to have this, you have this vision in mind of how you would want the output to be. And then, and so during the process, if it's not gearing towards that, then, okay, you get frustrated. But listening to you talk about that process with mixed media, it takes away that, that, um, desire to achieve perfection because it's all about expression. It's all about having the freedom to really unleash your creativity, tear your paper, collage, layer, color, and allow water, I mean, allow paint to bleed, mix with anything, and then journal. It's, I mean, it's, when you think about it, those are the things that we love to do as a kid. And sometimes we forgo those things since we are already adults. So your class, I'm sure if you haven't seen Christina's class, go ahead and check that out. Because if you listen to what she just said about her process, I personally, I would like to start doing that on my, because I do, I do journal, but it's very flat. And I would, you know, scribble like line drawing or sometimes what I call it, but I've never tried like mixed media. So it will be very interesting to follow the process that you just outlined and just let go. I think that's also one thing, just let go and just pour your heart out onto the paper with everything that you have around you. Okay, so the 30 minute class happened, last, sorry, 90 minute class happened last Saturday. With mixed media, I have to ask Christina, um, first off, why mixed media to begin with? You could have picked any other media, uh, art media, but why mix? Why mixed media? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, I when I was really getting serious about painting. I mean, this is a long time ago. I took a class with fabulous teacher. She was amazing, and we did. We worked with oil paints, which I loved. I mean, other uh -huh. than the fact that you have to wait a week for everything to yes. dry, but we were, we were working on landscapes and that's what I thought I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I did, I loved it. Um, and that lasted a certain amount of time and then life got busy and, you know, didn't stick to that, which was, which was sad. And then I tried watercolor. Well, I wasn't very good at watercolor, mm -hmm. but I love watercolors, like love watercolors. And again, I tried the landscapes, um, I was, I was okay at the oils, but not so much the watercolor. And then, um, my friend owned a shop, a mixed, um, a stamping shop actually in town. And she had a variety of materials. I mean, I had no idea what to do with these mm. things, but she gave me some free magazines cause they were, you know, um, past the date or whatever. And I started looking through these things and, 
I mean, some of the things were kind of weird, I thought, but most of it just inspired me and I had no idea. And then when I started taking classes, I realized that I could take all the things that I loved and take little bits of them and put them together. And I can't explain. I think it's like you said, it's just this, this diving in of self-expression and you don't have to be a perfectionist. And I know, you know, when I was painting the landscapes and stuff, yeah, you wanted it to be perfect. You wanted that mountain to look like a proper (laughs) mountain with all the right angles and everything, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's the one thing I I love about mixed media and I, I would encourage people to try it, even if they are a watercolor painter, painter, or just an acrylic painter or a plein air painter is like, take your mediums, make a background, and then maybe add something to it. Maybe if you're, say, for example, you're, you're painting a building um, just to try, maybe it's just on a little card or something and you, you know, cut a little piece of paper out and glue it on a building. Maybe that's the door. Maybe that's a a design factor Mm. of the building. I don't know. You could, you could just play on a little scale just to have some fun, or you could um, just make a random background and add little things. And then, Oh, suddenly you start seeing shapes and you start drawing around them. And now this is becoming a bird or a flower or whatever. Um, it, It depends, I guess, on what you like, but it's just with mixed media. I find it resonated with me because there were no rules really. And yeah. I could get messy and I could, I could try new thing. I just, I can't explain exactly, but it just fire. It put a fire within me, the mixed media, like, like nothing ever had before. Wow. That is powerful fire. And at the same time, you did mention it's like without rules. And I think with art, sometimes we confine ourselves that these are, of course, there are techniques, like when we talk about technicalities, but with mixed media, like you said, it's like the possibilities are endless. Once you allow your curiosity to kick in, once you allow allow yourself to be creative and to let go of all this and the desire to, to, to have a perfect outcome, because there's no such thing. Like what you said, art is subjective. And... I, I think what, what I'm getting from you as well, as long as you're enjoying the process and you love, you you are enjoying everything. You're putting everything that you love. You, you're, you, you've you talked about this um, in Lent earlier, Christina, that everything that you love is now weaved together. And it, it's, it's, it became a, in a different form and then you translate it into teaching now with other people. So... Talking about other things that you love, is there anything else, like another hobby? Because I've I've read that once you start to, let's say, art, right, painting or doing mixed media, and it becomes like your job and you start earning from it, then you need to find another hobby. So do you do you have that or um, do oh, I, outside that you do? I, I know you have dog. Oh, yeah. You have a dog. We both have, but um, yeah. 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 Yes. I, my problem is I have too many things. Oh, (laughs) I have like 25 projects on the go at all times. It's just crazy. Uh But I, I love being outside Mm. and I love being in the garden and in the forest. And I love, uh, pressing flowers and I love keeping my garden nice and I love growing things and I love taking my botanicals and seeing what I can do with them and I love I'm I'm into clay right now so I'm making these um all sorts of different like they're flatter things and maybe little bowls and stuff out of clay and I'm I'm printing patterns into them and going to be doing up a series of that. I'm really into that. I, I love, this is crazy, but I, I try and I try and work the creativity into everything I do. So it's like, if I'm going for a walk, I look for rusty objects because sometimes I find them and I just in the neighborhood, I don't know. Or if I drive past the, the metal 
collection place on the way to this one place I walk my dog sometimes they'll have like little random little rusty bits kicking around and I grab that because I like to use those to um, do some eco dyeing and it's just so crazy you know the little <laughs> things you wow. find yes. and I love to make prints with nature and um, I've gotten more creative with my cooking <laughs> not that that's a hobby <laughs> it's not a necessity <laughs> um yeah. I'm into, you know, energy work and, you know, mindfulness and learning about that. That's, you know, really kind of passionate about that. Um, oh, photography, of course. Oh my gosh, I love photography and video, videography and all of that. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Those are, I guess those You're are me. busy girl, but I love, busy. I love these activities that you just mentioned, like simply walking around the neighborhood and finding things. Sometimes we, we don't pay attention to those, you know, when you walk, you, everyone is so busy that you either walk very, very fast, very, very quickly. Um, Cause you have somewhere to be, but hearing you talk about that, made me realize that you have to really take some time to pay attention to your surrounding because there's beauty all around and when you add a pinch of creativity into it you'll never know what what you know what can come out of it and you yourself I think it's really in your core ever since you were a kid that you've always been curious and creative and I'm looking at your background right now and I, I I'm I'm thinking right now that I wish I have those books, those crafts behind you, because they're just so beautiful to look at. Uh, this shelf was made for me, this little shelf, oh. and then I uh, covered it with paper and um, uh, lace and things like that. And then the oh. the idea for this one was I was inspired from a class I took a long time ago to fill it with things that you love or things that have great meaning to you as you collect them along the way. And, and that's what I've done. And I think I still have some holes to fill in there. Yeah. yeah. I'll find stuff. So that was a, that was a, a sh- it's a small box. So if you're listening to this, you might want to check out YouTube just to see what I'm, what we're talking about, but it's so behind Christine is a shelf and in one of the shelves, there is a small shelf with little like, shelves in it so those are that's pre-made for you yeah that was special made for me Specially mm-hmm. made. and then I love the idea of filling that with things that are oh. meaningful to you so fun and and within there you can create little mixed media pieces to put on there like I did that here here um I guess I didn't do too many places but that's the fun thing is so you can make little things yeah you know and what do you want to use fabric wire paint wood whatever um and and you can you know make little things to put in your little little holes your little cubbies or shelves or whatever they're called <laughs> oh, yes. it's actually so fun it's, a, it's such a great project i'd love to do another one i would love you've inspired, inspired me you've inspired me <laughs> <laughs> I would love to sit in your class and listen to you talk more about all these creative things that you're doing, these projects, because they're not just projects per se, but everything that, you, from what I'm getting, I mean, just in this interview alone, is it, and everything that you do, there's always, there's something, you know, there's a story in it, there's meaning in everything that you do, because you, of this mindset that, you know, everything is connected. You can just weave in everything together and with creativity. And looking at that specific shelf, uh, I mean, shelf alone, you know, putting things that are meaningful to you. I wish that people will inspire to do that as well. It takes some time to really think about what are, the, what are the things that are meaningful to me along the way, the things that I've collected. So, Christine, most of our listeners are someone who is a hobbyist or someone who's thinking maybe do I want to create or make art but probably they are still in defense so is there anything or any golden nuggets that you can I know you've you've touched on this a little bit um earlier uh in one of the questions but any sort of golden nuggets that you can share with the audience or someone who probably thinking um mixed media that's a little bit scary um I don't know which one to take or I don't want, I don't know if I'm creative enough to try out art. What pieces of advice or golden nuggets that you can share 
with our audience who might be in the fence um, to start art? Yeah, that's a good question. I think this is, this is going to be easy to say, maybe harder to do, is just do it. Because you'll never, you can watch as many classes as you want, as many videos as you want, and you think to yourself, I can do that. Yeah, But until you actually go to do it, your brain will really only learn by doing. That's how we learn best is by doing. So I would say if you're on the fence, you don't need a lot of materials. You really don't. Get a few little things that, that you love that makes your heart sing. Maybe it's water paints. Maybe it's pastels. Maybe it's beautiful paper. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. But I think is to get the feel of how do I feel when I'm gluing this on or how do I feel when I'm you know mixing paint and I'm adding this onto my little piece my little substrate here and just um just allowing yourself and opening yourself up to possibility it doesn't mean this is the only medium you're ever going to use because um there's just so many things going on out there and with the internet there's just so many directions we could go but start start with what makes your heart sing like and the colors that make your heart sing and another tip I have and this this is a really good tip is you know before you go to bed at night prepare your workspace whether you have a a separate table or or a portable tray that you move to your kitchen table or whatever Mm -hmm. prepare a few materials ahead like put the water in the glass even Get out the brushes you think you're going to use. Get out the colors you think you're going to use. And it doesn't have to be a lot, like I say, but you just prepare a little thing. You get a little substrate ready. It's all ready to go so that the next day when you carve that time out for yourself, you do not have to procrastinate and, oh, well, you know, I don't really want to go through the process of getting all my stuff up. It's right there. So it's so much easier to just slide right into it. That's, that's a really big tip is the preparation really yeah and then that and then so when you do your thing it doesn't have to be an hour it could be 15 minutes half an hour whatever then clean it up and then get it ready for the next day and just try something try if you're into drawing or you know you want to um be doing some some still life or whatever um get your get your inspiration picture ready to go you know, don't be floundering around for at the last minute. Get it, get it all ready to go and just try it. And if it doesn't work out, you can use it as collage paper or recycle or whatever. Nobody has to know. That is a really good tale. I've never thought of that. And sometimes, you know, preparing your things beforehand, having that sacred space allotted for you to create, that is conducive. And that would really help you not not to procrastinate and um you know because sometimes when you are that's really you're absolutely right starting is really difficult but like what you said you just have to start just have to do it just go ahead and do it that's a really good tip preparing your things the night before never really thought of that thanks christine um, I, I really enjoyed our conversation. There are a lot, of, especially the weaving life, weaving creativity into life and everything that you love, weave together and then doing, using that to create impact and help others. It's just very profound and awakening as well, humbling, especially at this time when people really need um, something that will probably give them hope that will allow them to look forward to something um so christine thank you so much i know you also have a a channel on youtube um my girlfriend is an artist um uh, what what are the things that you talk about there what are the main topics um is it also about art or yeah uh we're filming actually this weekend episode six i think oh ah! Um, we have one or two more to go yes so my girlfriend the artist is just a little series I have going on my YouTube channel with my dear friend Sarah Gardner and she's an artist as well mixed media artist so we we have these conversations about life 
um, it's not just, we don't just talk about anything. Um, you know, one day we talked about boundaries. Another day we talked about self-love and these kinds of things and like really profound stuff. I think things that people will listen to and can resonate with and just reaffirm for themselves, or maybe they'll even learn something. And then we show how we um, weave that conversation into our art. So how that conversation impacts our art journaling. And we made just an art journal book that we're working in. And so every page really is different because every conversation is about a different topic and has a different feel. And we have some really powerful conversations. Like we keep saying, this was the best one, but we always say that, you know, (laughs) we've gotten some really good feedback. So, you know, it's just, it's nice it's nice for us because it's a really great process for Sarah and I to go through. But then when we get feedback, we, we just feel so illuminated that we can make a difference for someone else. And we both are very, very much about that and paying it forward. Um, So it's a really great, yeah, it's a great series. And I love the art part of it because then I get to see what she's doing and she gets to see what I'm doing, (laughs) you know, and it's just a sped up video. They're, they're only like maybe 15 minutes long. It's not super long, but we'll definitely check that out. My good friend is an artist. Episode six, you're already on episode six. Yeah, we will be. Yeah. Yeah. We've done. Yeah. More or less once a month. I love conversations like that. And really it's the same with, with make for art. And that's, that's why we love talking to artists and hearing your stories because we learn a lot from, from the stories and the challenges that you face and how you over, um, came them at the same time, pieces of advice more than art, but life in itself, like what you said, everything is sweet together connected and so christine thank you so much for for being on the show i enjoyed our conversation i learned a lot and probably i'll start doing mixed media on my journal as well i'm going to try it out prepare my things the night before so that i won't procrastinate but thank you so much for everything that you've shared and for teaching with us as well here at etcher we loved your class and i'm sure your students did too so if you want to check that out that is still up on the website so please go ahead and check out the mixed media class of christine karpiak thank you so much christine for being on the show um i look forward to seeing more of your works um and that podcast or um series that you have going on in youtube we'll definitely check that out Oh, well, thank you so much. It's been, you're so lovely. It's just been so (laughs) lovely talking to you. And, you know, the way you sum up all the perspectives is just so perfect. You you have such a lovely way of doing that. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for being on the show. Please stay safe and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take Take care. care. Bye. Bye. Art indeed has a way of encompassing all of our emotions, decisions, and perceptions. It is a way to express the fragility of human conditions while creating a portal to allow us to discover and have a deeper understanding of self. This conversation with Christine unlocked a new perspective and mindset in me. How about you? How has art influenced your life? Do share with us your comments through the blog posts associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Christine. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast, or you can find us on YouTube at Etra Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.